it's me, Mikey Pipes, and Peter Piper. We're at our first service call of the day. Today is Thursday, November 11th, 2021. I asked Peter Piper, Peter Pan, what kind of boiler this is when we first got here. And he walks over to the boiler, sees the sticker, and says, it's a Penco boiler. And I said, all right, wise guy, what type of boiler is it? And what was his answer? Steam. Exactly. Bingo. He's learning. All right. We have been servicing this boiler for a number of years. And one of the first observations that I made years ago was the near boiler piping not only is wrong, but is also in copper. Now, the dead men of steam say do not use copper for steam boiler header piping. Why do they say that? You know why they say that, Peter Pan? Corrosion. Yeah, close, close. We'll give them, we'll give them a credit. We'll give them a B for that answer. But the number one reason is the constant expansion and contraction of the piping will weaken the joints, and they'll start to leak. That's the number one reason. But also, the copper in, is really not good with the steam, and you know, whatever you can Google it. That's the main reason. But it's done wrong. So let's take a look. Here is our supply. So steam leaves here. It comes up and feeds the two steam mains. All right, this one goes to the back of the house. This one looks like it goes to the front of the house. But it stops along the way and goes this way, which would be our equalizer. And here is our dry wet returns. You notice they're up high, right? And at the end of each wet return, we have these steam main air valves, right? Bush down, of course, so you're restricting there. But nonetheless, this has been installed for, I'm going to guess, probably 15, 20 years, and it heats the house just fine. Doesn't necessarily mean all the piping is right, and maybe it would be more efficient if it was done differently, but Nonetheless, it still works. All right, we're here doing a tune-up. We already drained the boiler, made sure that the low water cutoff came on, which it did, and then the automatic feeder fed the water back into the boiler, and now she's working. Observation, the auto vent damper disconnected, All right, and is it manually open position, as you can see there. Our 15 PSI relief valve does not have a drip leg on it, and it should, but again, I could bring a camel to water, can't make it drink. We're going to do a combustion test and make sure everything else is in orderly and operating properly, safely. Question for you. What is that called? Um, I have it in my notes. No, we did, I just told you what this was. Um, it's the pressure. Pressure what? What is this called? Uh, it's the, the pressure gauge. What is this loopy thing called? Pigtail. What is this called? Oh, I forget oh my God, are you special needs? <laughs> are you? No, I swear I'm not. Remember when, when the, the first time I saw you, Monday morning, I said, listen, I have no problem teaching as long as you retain. I've said pressure troll at least oh. 10 times since Monday, right? You must remember that. Mm -hmm. What is that called? That's the relief valve. How many pounds of pressure does it open at? 15. Excellent. What is this called? The low water puddle. Correct. What is this called? Um, the auto switch. There you go. See, it's very easy. What is that called? Um, that's the, uh, the flow set, the flow. Flow. Yeah. It, 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 it'll, it pushes the water back. It's, it's automatic water feeder. Unknown caller. Okay. 
and this, I don't expect you to know, but this vent damper. vent damper, automatic vent damper, correct. All right, excellent. Very good, very good. What is this stuff called, this white stuff? Uh, that is either insulation. What kind of insulation is that? Um, that is called crack. <laughs> no, this is asbestos. Oh, really? Right, this is asbestos uh, steam pipe insulation. The stuff there that looks like cardboard, that's called AeroSeal asbestos steam pipe insulation. It's illegal and no longer manufactured. And there's billions and billions of dollars of lawsuits over it, including my good buddy, Artie Luxembourg at the law firm of Whites and Luxembourg. He just secured, I think last year, a, a $9 billion settlement against Roundup. And he's one of the, the, the premier asbestos litigators, you know, for huge, huge settlements. Very nice guy, Artie Luxembourg. If you need a great litigator, call Whites at Luxembourg. They're located on Madison Avenue, Manhattan. They own the whole building and they got private jets and shit like that. <laughs> All right. Let's finish our, let's do our combustion test and make sure everything is operational and safe. All right, just finishing up the combustion analysis. We're now going to print the results. Almost perfect. Take a look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Six point seven percent oxygen, two particles per million of CO, gross efficiency of eighty-one percent, and we have nice negative pressure on the draft. Perfect. All right. Pop quiz, Peter Pan. Mm -hmm. What is this called that I'm staring at? <laughs> all right her complaint is that it's not working and as you can see the water level is kind of low this toilet has seen better days a lot of iron in the water here but she's not filling and the valve is open well at least we think it's open let me put my big black thing down yeah it's open Let's close. Okay. And a little hissing stopped. This fluid master is very, very, very slow to fill the toilet. Let's give it a flush. And let's replace the fill valve with a Wolverine brass model. And she'll have years and years and years of trouble free, trouble free flushing. The commode. The porcelain god, the water closet, invented by Mr. Crapper himself. The Lou. The Lou. Yes. I guess it's the bathroom. It's an American standard, 1.6 gallon per flush. All right, let's go get the porch on the left side of the toilet tank on the floor. We got the Wolverine brass, the Finale Ultimate. I love this. It's got the brass shank. We're gonna take that out. As you can see, brass shank. I love it. It's nice. It does its job. All right? And it appears to even be set properly already. So we should be good right there. All right? Now, I am going to get under here and disconnect the water supply. This flexible braided stainless steel tubing. All right? I'm gonna disconnect that, and I got the towel there. Catch any water that may be an issue, and it's not gonna go by hand. So I gotta to try to get my wrench in there. Oh. Let's see what Mike needs. All right. By the way, check out the WhatsApp. <laughs> that nut disconnected, right? And I'm gonna be a little slick here. There's a little bit of water left in the, in the tank, but I have the nut disconnected. I'm gonna take the towel, 
place it over that hole. And now look. Look at that horrible, disgusting fill valve. I'm gonna take the new one, put that right there. Where's my brass nut? Give me that brass nut. All right, and this is gonna go right here. I'm gonna tighten that up. And make sure that the controls are not in the way of the flapper. So I moved it over a little bit. And now I'm gonna take my Nipix adjustable wrench and tighten up the nut that's holding the fill valve in place. And then tightening, you make sure you don't kill it. Otherwise, you may crack the porcelain. That's in there like that. We're gonna reconnect our flexible, sorry, try to get in there for you. Flexible water supply line. This is a nice one. You don't need a wrench to do it. Got these little, right there, okay. Now, open this box. We're gonna need that, that tube. All right. to take that off. I don't need it now. That's gonna go there like that. And the tube. Yeah. You have a knife on you? I do not. Why not? Let's see. Let's put you in there and stick you right in there like that. Now, watch the difference night and day. We're gonna make sure we dry up everything and we'll triple check to make sure we have no leaks. So now she's filling up. We're gonna maybe adjust the fill valve to make sure there's a right amount of water per flush in here and make sure she flushes well and make sure the flapper is intact. No need to be stuck on repeat though. <laughs> See where it stops at. Perfect. Look at that. Great flush. Appears to be not leaking water. It's brown in there. We're going to clean up this tank a little bit. And I'm going to take this hose. Hold down the flap, and we're gonna just wash out the inside of the tank. Just gonna clean out the tank best we can. The spray nine. This one's kind of like little special ed because it's it comes out like it's retarded or something, you know. <laughs> we'll let that soak for a little bit, and uh, then we'll turn the valve back on and rinse down the inside of the of the tank. All right. I think it's the best I can do given the conditions. We have high amounts of iron in the water here. Nicey nice. No cocky in the bowl. All right. Not too shabby. See? Mm -hmm. No leaks. Good. All right. Let that fill up one more time. Give her a good old flush. And fill out our service pal invoice. Perfect. All right. It is 9 a.m. Just banged out two little service calls. And we're off to the main attraction. All right, this service call that we're going to, this is a YouTube subscriber. He has a steam boiler. He is in Belrose, Queens, and his boiler was improperly installed a few months ago, according to him, and it looks fairly brand new. 
This was Monday's video. That's when we did multiple service calls. But his problem there is clogged wet returns and we're gonna unclog them. Because that's me, that's what I do, Mikey Pipes. And we got Peter Pan, Peter Piper, Peter, Peter Pumpkin Eater. All right, let's head over to Belrose for the feature presentation. All right. This is the return from the front of the house, return from the back of the house. We're going to do what's never done. <laughs> and that is deburr that pipe. All right. For our purge station, or the means to flush this wet return, Webstone, one inch press valve with purge station on that, full port. We're going to cut one in right here, one right there, and then we're going to work on the drop below the steam main in the front of the house and put a something similar there as well. Right. Press that in. on the front drop. All right. We need to break this connection. I want to replace this elbow too. See how it's broken? All right. At least it's not PVC pipe. I've seen that before too, by the way. Really? Yeah. It's for very, very scary. I've seen PVC pipe being installed, installed as a steam main. Even I've heard this Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's just not right. I've seen PEX, right, going from off the steam main to a radiator. Yeah, I've seen it. It's crazy. <sighs> okay, let's start with the grinder. I've got the Milwaukee M18 grinder. You may be asking, Mikey Pipes looks brand new, like it is. When we did that double steam boiler, it did not make its way back to the truck. So I'm gonna cut out this union first. Grab the wrenches, 1824, get some WD-40 as well. Um, the end result is I need to get rid of this T, because it's broken. So there's something stuck in there, so I'm gonna grind this. Right. I made a couple cuts there with the grinder. Now I'm going to hammer it out. Break this piece out, hopefully. We shall see. Maybe not deep enough. A little bit more. Where's the grinder? Just go a little bit more right there. crack there. Let's get the sawzall. All right. Mm -hmm. We're going to cut this nipple. And we're going to try to take out something here. We'll see. She's out. And we're good. Okay. Carefully put the pipe down. Okay. Right there. The pipe shifted. Carefully lift up the end of that pipe. And it's got to go more against the wall, the foundation wall over there. It moved out towards further away from it. So lift it up, keep going. As far as it goes? Yeah, it's not really Okay, that keeps right there. All right, go get a one inch black 90. It's in that box. Okay. I need some pipe dope okay. and I need Teflon tape. I'm going to try to take this out. <clears throat> 
red protector is gonna stay. That's for sure. All right, she should come out by hand now. I got the, the 24 inch. Making a fool of me, damn it. All right, I'm almost done putting this together. Here, put you to work instead of just holding a pipe. You notice any differences with these gloves? One's ripped and one's. Yes. Yeah. This one is the glove you gave me from the cheap gloves. This is only five mil. This glove is Dark Knight. This is nine mil. See, this one's not cut up. This one is. Wanna know why? Do you know why? Because one one is double. One is almost double, correct. Alright, now I'm gonna disconnect this union right here. What size union is this? One inch. Okay, you retained you retained that. That's a good thing. And now I'm gonna tighten this up by hand first. This cheap glove. And now, tighten this up. Very tight spot here. I got the, I got the uh, relief on the gas regulator right there in my way. But we good. We got this bad boy. Nice, nice. Half inch boiler drain in that box, and then we'll get the Teflon on that, and then we're gonna start to flush this out, and hopefully she's good. You were holding the wrench in the or wrong orientation. Do what you just did again. And which way are you trying to turn that? Clockwise or counterclockwise? Uh, I was moving it counterclockwise. All right, and it was very hard to do that, right? Yes. Much harder than actually tightening it. I want you to spin the wrench in the other orientation and now try to turn it kind of clockwise. Spin the wrench in the other orientation. No. Go over here with it. All right. Now, try to do what you're just doing. Yeah, now it's easier. Okay, but you, you, you're... You totally t went right over your head. You were trying to turn it counterclockwise with the wrench in the wrong orientation. Yet I had you flip the wrench around in the proper orientation, yet you tried to go clockwise with it. Why? I wanted to show you that by having the wrench in the right orientation will allow you to uh, you know, tighten by doing clockwise or loosen by doing counterclockwise. Mm -hmm. And always remember, lefty, loosey, righty, tighty. Now, I want you to try to loosen that valve with the wrench in the right orientation, just like I, sh I told you. Loosen it. You want to loosen. Lefty, loosey, righty, tighty. Yes. Okay. So you want to loosen, right? Mm -hmm. And what, what, what way are you going to go? Are you going to go clockwise or counterclockwise? Loosen it. Open the wrench up a little bit more. It's, it's an adjustable wrench. It's called a channel lock. So you can have a, a good grip on the handles by doing that. Okay. And also, for maximum leverage, you want to keep your hand towards the end of the wrench. Okay. Now, I want you to loosen that a little bit. Okay? Was that easier? Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to tighten it back up. 
But before, okay, keep going. It works for you. You're good? Yes. All right, now I'm gonna replace that steam main up there. So get out of the hole. Uh, she don't wanna go, huh? She don't wanna go. Where's that hammer? Give me that hammer. Let's see. I thought we making another wrench. about the leverage. If I had a 36 inch, which I do, and try to take out this bushing, it may work, but uh, okay. So she's loose enough where I can now use my big ass channel lock by Nipix. And let's take out the bushing. Okay, there it is. So now, they did this wrong, see? This should not have been sized down. I hope you're, I hope you're a good film, film uh, recording guy. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. All right, as a main, you don't want that. This belongs on a radiator, all right? You don't want to size down from three quarter all the way down to that tiny little thing. You don't want to do that, no good, all right? So, what's the Teflon tape? Now, let's wrap some Teflon tape on this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six times. Now we're gonna shove that into the hole right there. And now we're good. So if you notice all that brown stuff, this residue's rust, that was the water spraying out of the steam main because she wasn't doing her job anymore. Let me make this a little bit tighter. Right there. No room up here, I swear. Very little room to work with. Okay. Now, now we flush. You ready? Mm -hmm. Let's go. It says A.O. Smith Signature Premier, but this came from Lowe's because it's got a plastic valve. And that's why they're cheap at Lowe's, big box stores. There's my washing machine hose hooked up to the purge station there. Get a flat screwdriver, open that valve. Now, we are going to first flush towards the boil. Let's close off this and let's open up this into another orientation. Good, all right. We are going to, right now, it is blocked off. If I go this way, water will go up. The rep return. Towel, yep. What? If I get a towel, it's leaking. Yeah, if we'll get a towel, it's leaking. Okay. okay, let me, okay. I want you to use your head from now on, okay? You have a tiny fl flat tipped uh, screwdriver there and a large one there, all right? Why don't you get a bigger one if you notice it's not working right for you, right? Yeah. I also have this, there's 11 and 1 in here. Find a large flat tip in there yeah. to to loosen, to open that valve. You are, did you take a little school bus to school? You sure? Okay, so it's not on it. Turn it off. Yeah. Cheap Home Depot. Where's the, where's the channel lock I was just using? Let's see if I can tighten this up a little bit more. If not, you know, I gotta come up with a different source. That is now open and leak free. There is our hose. We want to be very careful not to cross connect anything here and contaminate the water. I'm going to spin that lever around. I'm going to flush back to the boiler first. All right, to make things easier, I removed the handle. And as you can see, that T represents the direction of flow. So right now, water will go down into the boiler. Let's see if we can see the side glass from here. Yes, we can. There it is. All right, let's watch that rise up.
Right, as you can see, it's going up. So we know that that line is now clear, All right? See, it went up uh, about a couple inches, okay? Now, we're gonna take the bucket, grab the bucket, make sure the hose is in there, and let's go to our purge station, or flush station. All right, you need to go in there, and you need to hook up the hose. You got a flashlight? Grab the red one. Okay, hook up the hose there, and flush out the line. All right, Peter Pan, Peter Piper, is going to hook up the hose to that half-inch boiler drain. And he is going to open that drain. Put the whole, you can put the bucket on the floor. You want to work smart, not hard. There's no need to hold the bucket. Open that up. And what do you have? You have anything? No. Did you think you're going to have anything anyway? No. Correct. Because I need to now. I need to open it up and give you water, right? Mm -hmm. so you watch that hose. You start yelling if there's a problem. So now that T, we're gonna point it up. So let me get my little lever right here and try to get that to go up one more time like that and like that. So now it's in the up orientation, right? Yes, it is. Okay. Now. We're gonna open this up and we are going to flush the wet return. Let's let them finish. Stop talking. Peter, you ready? No. What's going on? Is any water coming out yet? Okay. Let's go see what's going on. Our leaks. We got good flow there. Excellent. A lot of shit come out at first. Yeah. Okay. Let me close this. Okay. And we're gonna do that a few, a few more times. Oh, not that much. I can give you some more. Okay. All right. All right. Open back up. Let me give you some more. And then give a holler as you're as about to uh, be full, okay? Okay. All right. How you looking, Peter? Flushing that wet return. Lovely. All right. All right. All right. I'm going to do that a few more times. What's that noise? That noise. Hmm. Good gas. Yeah. Oh. And the regulator. Regulator's making noise. Call uh, Con Ed because that's going to give you a problem in the future. The regulator making the noise. All right, we'll do it a few more times. Peter Pan, yes. Do not leave the side door open on the truck. Okay. Okay. Even though we're in the driveway, anyone can easily walk right up to it 
and take a $4,000 piece of equipment. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. Consider where we are. All right. I knew I wasn't, you know, losing my mind the other day when we were here. When this boiler is on, I do smell gas. And you should not smell gas. So let's see what the issue is here. See, look at that. I knew it. I knew that there was a problem here. Look at that. There is your leak on the gas train right there. Bingo. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. All right, let's go tell them. You got a big problem. Big problem. How do you say big? Chinese? Korean? Chinese. Chinese? How do you say big problem in Chinese? Tao. Tao? Tao. Okay. Remember, we were smelling gas? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I sprayed this whole, I sprayed the whole gas valve down on Monday. You couldn't find it. I couldn't find it, right? But hold the flashlight. Watch this. Watch this. That's from here. That's gas, yeah. That's this. This is called the uh, the gas bar, gas train. All the gas flows through that thing. And is this the new unit? Yeah, I know. You said it's, a, it's a new th three months old, right? Yeah, well, this is cracked. That's cracked and damaged. They're gonna have you're gonna have to uh, we're gonna have to call the people who put this thing in for you. That one's fine there, but that's a leak. Look how big that bubble is. Oh, it's too much leak on the It's gas, leaking gas, no good. Tau, right? You say tau? Uh big problem? One T. One T? One T. One T. One T. Yeah. One T is big problem. Yeah. One T. See, you learn something new every day. One T. So so uh, how are they gonna fix this? You have to replace the, this. This is all gonna get come out. Just that one. This this, this black bar right here. This, oh, this, this T looking bar. thing. Oh. It's gotta come out and be replaced. Who you have to call them? The people put this in. Mm -hmm. You gotta call, you call Con Ed yet? Uh, just tell them. Listen. Tell them what the noise is making. Yeah, that number. It's coming from the meter. It's actually coming from the regulator, but this gas meter don't sound too healthy either. This is new. This is not new. Oh yeah, so they gotta come here. 250. We're just waiting for the boiler to heat up, and again, I don't want to leave this in that condition, but. I do have the door open. I do have that door open. And I also want to make sure that our banging sound goes away. Oh, look how built she is, almost to the top. We gotta to take some water out of here. Where's the bucket, a little hose? We're gonna take some water out of this boiler. Oh, what a shit show, mama. <laughs> Steam boiler header piping is all wrong. <laughs> oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. Alright, let's get the hose hooked up to the drain right there. Let's take some water out of this boiler. Why don't you use the one that's right over there that's not corroded and green? Yes! You don't see the other valve right there? Peter. Oh no, it was... And then Ope takes some water out of the boiler. Right, sorry about the background noise, guys. This regulator's shot. And there's our new steam main air valve. Full three quarter. And here is that purge station we set up. It is hot. And there is no more of that banging or that water hammer. And that banging sound was caused by the water violently exploding once steam traveling at around 50 miles an hour hits it. Uh, we've got a call into Con Ed already. They'll be in about 45 minutes. All right. Luckily for him, we did not have to replace this one inch wet return. St. Mike 
strikes again and saves more lives. We had that gas train leaking on that boiler. I knew something wasn't right on Monday, when I was here on Monday and I was spraying down the gas valve and it was fine, but you know what? I was determined. Everything happens for a reason. It was determined that I come back here today and find that leak and save this guy's life. All right, finished up that job, got paid, and now we're on our way back to the shop. We're gonna pick up some material for the next job that's gonna occupy us for the rest of the day. Um, just saving lives, that's what they call me, St. Mike. You know, and in the process, and in the process, getting stacks, buddy. Stacks, hacks, bring me stacks. <laughs> and if you haven't done so already, you must subscribe. Subscribe to the channel. There's no cost or obligation. And you, I will continue to feed you. And you will see videos of stacks of cash. Oh, I'm a lunatic. Love you. Be well.